Hi everyone, in this lecture 8, we will simulate the MOS metal oxide semiconductor structure. Before starting today's lecture, the simulation result with the SRH model are shown. First, the forward current, a PN junction is simulated. This curve shows the one without any recombination process. When the SRH model is activated, the curve is changed. Such an increase is related with the SRH center. In this forward bias, the electron hole recombination occurs at the depletion region. Therefore, the contacts should provide more electrons and holes to maintain the same internal carrier profile, and it increases the current. Note that it has a different slope in the semi-logarithmic graph. The current related with the recombination center has a weaker dependence on the anode voltage. Now, the reverse current. Again, we can observe an increase current level. In the reverse bias, the NP product is negligible. So, the recombination rate, R, is simply given by this form. Note that the sign of R is negative. It means that electron hole pairs are generated. Generated electrons and holes are moved to the n-type and p-type regions respectively. So, they additionally contribute to the current. Now it's time to construct a MOS capacitor. Previously for PN junction, we had only silicon regions. For the MOS capacitor, we need silicon and oxide regions. Once a cuboid is declared, it is divided into two regions, channel and insulator. In order to place the interface at z equal to 0, z naught value is minus 1 nanometer. Also, we must have two contacts. One is attached to the insulator. The other one is attached to the channel. They are named as gate and substrate respectively. When you draw the resultant structure, it is difficult to see the insulator layer simply because it is too thin. Anyway, the interface is located at g equal to 0 as explained in the previous slide. The thickness of the channel region should be carefully selected. If it is too thin, we get a long solution. On the other hand, if this is too thick, then we just waste our computational resources. Okay, now we have a structure to be simulated. The gate contact has a property to be specified before performing the simulation. It is work function. The work function is an energy difference between the vacuum level and the Fermi level. Since the work function is directly related to the threshold voltage, it is very important. The work function is not specified in the structure generation part by the map maker statement. Instead, when the structure is loaded, it is specified. In this example, the gate work function is 4.3 electron volt. Since the substrate contact is an ideal ohmic contact, you don't have to consider the substrate contact. Our goal today is to draw the integrated electron density as a function of the gate voltage. So we must calculate an integration of the electron density at every gate voltage. For that purpose, 
a book statement is required. As you can see here, with this line, an integration is calculated and written in the output CSV file. Here, we can find an argument factor. The test structure has an area of 1 micrometer by 1 micrometer. In other words, it has an area of 10 to the minus 8 square centimeter. The integration itself gives us the integrated electron density per 10 to the minus 8 square centimeter. However, usually, we want to express the integrated electron density in per square centimeter. A factor of 10 to the 8 is introduced. These figures show the result. The left one is the linear scale and the right one is in the semi-logarithmic scale. You can clearly observe the inversion characteristics. What is the threshold voltage? You must estimate it. In the right figure, also, we can estimate the sub-threshold slope. When we simulate the planar MOS structure, we must ensure that the substrate is sufficiently thick. How about our 200 nanometer thick substrate? This figure shows hole density at two gate voltages. As expected, the diffusion layer becomes wider. Still, at the end, the hole density approaches to the p-type doping concentration, so it's fine, but the margin is narrow. That's it for this lecture 8. Now we can simulate the MOS capacitor. However, before simulating the MOS transistor, we must understand the behavior of the MOS capacitor with analytic expressions. The next lecture will be devoted to analytic expressions for the MOS capacitor. Thank you and see you later.